Tomorrow, federal researchers will begin testing an experimental Ebola vaccine on humans. The National Institutes of Health will initially test 20 healthy volunteers to see if the vaccine is safe. An Ebola outbreak has killed more than 1,500 people in West Africa. The summer of 2014 will be remembered for the Ice Bucket Challenge. Americans, young and old, famous and not so famous, have been doused. There's also been a flood of donations, more than $100 million to fight ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. We wondered about the state of ALS research. Dr. John LaPook looked into it. 68-year-old Ed Tassaro just joined the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. His challenge is different than most. Tesaro has been fighting the disease for more than five years. My arms and legs are weaker. Uh, if I, when I walk, I'm, I'm pretty much at risk. That's really the only bad news. I'm breathing at 100% of normal, which is great news. In ALS, motor neurons, the nerve cells that control voluntary muscles, detach from the muscle and die. Patients lose control of movement and eventually their ability to breathe on their own. The cause of ALS is unknown. Tassaro is one of 30 patients in a clinical trial who had stem cells injected into their spinal column in an attempt to slow the progression of the disease. Normally, neurons are surrounded by cells that protect and nourish them. New research suggests that in ALS patients, these supporting cells become killers, poisoning the motor neurons. Animal studies have found stem cells can help heal the toxic supporting cells. From looking at um, human tissue. Dr. Jonathan Glass at Emory University is leading the trial. What the stem cells will do is create a nutritious environment for those motor neurons that are sick and allow them to recover somewhat so they can reconnect with their muscles or they can keep them from disconnecting from muscles for a longer period of time. Over the past decade, ALS research has been jump-started by technology that creates a so-called disease in a dish. Skin cells from an ALS patient are reprogrammed to become stem cells, then morphed into neurons in the lab. These neurons exhibit the same abnormalities as those in the ALS patient. This has sped up the pace of discovery for neuroscientists like Thomas Jessel at Columbia University Medical Center. It permits you to screen compounds, drugs, medicines, and if they work in that tissue culture dish condition, you can then go back and test them in the human. Has there been one sort of eureka moment where you looked at the ALS cells in a dish and you tried some compound and you said, ooh, that seems to make things better? Yes, we have compounds that when you add them, motor neurons don't die. And is that a big eureka moment or is that a little eureka moment? And so you have to be guarded, but at the same time, um, seize the enthusiasm of a discovery, no matter how small. It's a long way from a drug that works in a Petri dish or a stem cell that works in an animal to an effective treatment. But there is hope because every day ALS is becoming less of a mystery. Dr. John LaPook, CBS News, New York.